All right, we're back in the lab today, and we're going over the skull, uh, part of the skeletal system. Uh, there's several bones of the skull that I want you to know for class. And so we'll start from a frontal view of the skull here. Uh, keep in mind that there's some artificial features, since this is a plastic mold of a real skull, and I'll try to point those out, uh, things that wouldn't actually exist on a real skull. You can see that just like a preparation of an actual skull, we've actually sliced through the cranial cap here. To, uh, to be able to lift it off and study the inside structures, the interior structures. So this bone in the front here is the frontal bone. As we turn the skull, you'll see a large suture here. And uh, this suture, this uh, coronal suture, right, separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones, which are separated in turn by this suture, the sagittal suture. You can see that a suture is a very interesting type of an articulation between bones. Remember, articulation is just another word for joint. Right? And a suture is only very slightly movable between those bones. Right? We used to think that it was completely immobile, but now we realize there is some slight movement. This hole, of course, was just drilled for the skeleton preparation. It doesn't exist in real life. But interestingly enough, right here where these bones meet in an infant, there is still a hole, a big gap called a fontanelle, as these bones are growing together. And uh, that actually assists in childbirth because all the bones are able to move around a little bit. And uh, the head is able to fit a little better through the birth canal. You may know, if you've known anybody who's had a baby, that, uh, that sometimes you have to wait for the infant's head to, uh, to actually take its final shape. Uh, it's, it, it actually gets deformed a little bit during the process of childbirth as it's squeezed by the birth canal. All right, here we have this final suture, the lamboidal suture. You can see it looks like the Greek letter lamba. And back here, the occipital bone. On the occipital bone, we have the foramen magnum. Right? And the structure inside here is just a plastic structure that's, uh, that was created by the company that made this skull to help hold on uh, that doesn't exist in real life. In real life, we'd see the brain and spinal cord coming out through here. And then on that occipital bone, you have a couple rounded knobs. Now, if you've studied the video on the, uh, on the limb, the lower limb, you know that those rounded knobs are called condyles. These are called the occipital condyles because they're on the occipital bone. Again, looking from the bottom of the skull, something we'd never be able to see uh, you know, with, without all the tissue gone, we can look into the mouth and see that up here, the hard palate, right up to the, the roof of your mouth, you can feel up there with your tongue, that hard palate is actually made of two bones. The first bone, is the horizontal process, the horizontal plate of the maxilla, right? And then this bone that makes the very back part here that you can see, you can sort of see the dividing line in there. This little back third of your hard palate is the palatine bone. The jaw bone is the mandible. Now the mandible articulates with the skull at a point right here a joint called the temporomandibular joint. And it's called that because this is the temporal bone. It's just below the parietal bone and just to the front of the occipital bone. A couple features on the temporal bone. You have the hole that leads into the skull for your ear called the external auditory meatus. And you have a large knob here for muscle attachment for the masseter, for your chewing muscle, called the mastoid process. And then you have a pointy little process right here that looks kind of like a, a pen or a stylus, right? Like the end of a sharpened pencil, maybe, called the styloid process, because somebody thought it looked like what we used to use to mark, uh, mark figures in clay tablets a long time ago. Now, the temporal bone actually sends a long process out that forms part of an arch that makes your cheekbone. And this arch is called the zygomatic arch. This is called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And then this bone is the zygomatic bone. And it has a corresponding temporal process. And they meet together here. And the two bones share the responsibility for making this arch. These large holes on the front of the skull, obviously, is where your eyes go. These are called your orbits. Right? So you've got a right and a left orbit. And of course, right and left. I'll remind you, uh, our features of this individual's skull, not your right and left. The bone that forms your upper jaw is the maxilla. Then the bridge of your nose here is the nasal bone. And just inside of that is a bone with a groove in it. You can just barely see that groove right there. 
the lacrimal bone. All right, so those are the bones that you can see from the outside of the skull. Now, if we take off the cranial cap and look in here, again, this disc is artificial, but what we see is the, is the brain case, the cranium, and it's composed of several bones. The frontal bone here actually curls under and forms the bottom part of the first part here, and then it's difficult to see the outline, but if you'll watch the way I trace my finger here, there's a butterfly-shaped bone in here, and that butterfly-shaped bone is the sphenoid bone, S-P-H-E-N-O-I-D. And the sphenoid bone has some interesting features in it. It has the optical foramen, the holes that the optic nerves drop through, and it has a little saddle-like feature in here. And this saddle-like feature was actually named that in Latin. The word cella tersica, which is the name of that feature, means Turk's saddle. And apparently it looked a lot like a Turkish saddle. Anyway, there's a, a special gland that lives right in this protected place right here, the pituitary gland, the, you know, sort of the master endocrine gland in the body. It uh, does everything from uh, stimulating the gonads to produce the... Uh, the special hormones that they do to uh, human growth hormone and other important features. And you'll notice that there's also a little window here in all of this area that's frontal bone up here. And this little window is actually a different kind of bone. It's the ethmoid bone. It's got a ridge in the middle of it called the crista galli, which means rooster's comb. And it has, I think you can see, a perforated plate on either side of that ridge. And that perforated plate actually is the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone. And your olfactory nerves, your nerves for smell, drop down through those holes. And then again, we can see the, uh, the occipital bone back here. So those are the bones of the skull, the features that you need to know for this class. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.